Good morning, Chair. Good morning, all the members and everyone present. Chair, it's uh, 10 o'clock now, and we've got four members for now. So we should so we are from on the quorum. Do we, 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 we have a quorum for the meeting? No, not yet, Chair. We're still short of one member. Of one member. I think they'll get us um, as we yeah, as we proceed. Um, it's 10 o'clock now. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, good morning, honorable members. A very good morning to the minister and, and the team, DG. Um, we, our meeting is going to be shorter than I thought it's going to be because we have a, a sitting this afternoon at two and the buses will be picking members at 12 uh, from the villages. So which means we've got to push and maybe finish this meeting by quarter to 12 or yeah, around there so that the members can be able to you know, uh, freshen up and then rush to, the, to get the buses. Um, the, Is the minister in the in the meeting? I did not see his his name here. Um, Honourable Chairperson, um, he is not yet in, but he is a, a certainly a plan to join. Um, uh, because he was just in a meeting this morning, we started earlier. But he is a, he had committed that he will join us. It was as you chairperson, honorable chair, you know, we've got two, there is, a, there is also a portfolio committee uh, currently sitting parallel to this one. And uh, then uh, the minister and DM, they decided to split themselves. So the DM won't be here, is in the portfolio committee, leading the team there. And then minister is uh, um, uh, committed to lead the team here. I can just check his whereabouts now, Honorable Jefferson. No, it's okay. Uh, but, um, Milton, do you fly the, the agenda? Thank you. As you can see, this meeting is supposed to end at 12. 30, but uh, we'll have to push faster so that we, we finish the meeting before that time. And obviously because of this time constraint, they may not be um, deeper engagement with the presentation uh, because of the time constraint. And that um, uh, later, I mean, after this meeting, the questions will be sent to the department. Some of the questions will be sent to the department uh, for written um, responses. Um, Gigi, because of this time uh, constraint, I think I should uh, give you an opportunity to open the meeting and make the presentation. The minister will do his uh, opening remarks when he joins us. Um, we time is time is not on our side. Um, the UNESCO declared the year 2022 to 2032 as a decade of indigenous languages. Um, and on the program here, we do have um, a briefing on the promotion of indigenous languages that is including Koi, Koi uh, Sen, Nama, and other languages. Uh, we would like to get, you know, how far are we with this? Are we part of, are we respond? How is our response to the UNESCO call for this decade uh, as the decade of indigenous languages? It will be very interesting to know which languages are included and which ones are not. Um, but we'll leave, we'll leave that to the, to the presenters. Uh, over to you, DG.
No, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, good morning to the Honorable Members. Um, I am Hussein Kize, uh, the DG. I would like to just introduce the team of the department uh, that is here, Honorable Chairperson. I have uh, the Deputy Director General, uh, Dr. Cynthia Kumalo, who is responsible for Program 3, which is ACPD. And then I've got uh, DTG, um, sorry, and the Chief Director under her uh, a branch, which is uh, Lisa Kumbrink. Um, and then I've got uh, Lodwick, who is in my office. And then we've got Nogbonga also, uh, Ramalepe, who is in my office. And then we've got um, a DG uh, for Sitemba Ndima, who is uh, also then uh, responsible for uh, heritage promotion and preservation. And then we've got uh, Sivuila Watani in the office of the deputy minister. And they're also accompanied by Mrs. Zanele Ndima, who is also in the uh, uh, branch of uh, ACPD. Honorable Chairperson, um, the presentation um, that we were asked to have, we have a number of them. It's uh, five presentations and uh, in the order of the uh, way they were written, uh, will be just guided by the honorable chairperson, but the order is indicating that it's presidential employment stimulus uh, package program, and then followed by indigenous languages, and then it's music and art forms uh, for the promotion thereof, and then it's functionality of community libraries and the installation of the South African flags and schools. I would like to assume, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, that it is in this order that we shall present as per, as guided by the program that was sent to us. But before that, Chairperson, I would like to really submit our humble gratitude uh, that you were able to grant us the postponement at a very short notice uh, due to the circumstances that uh, particularly myself I was in, as well as the situation that uh, could not allow us to give the committee the best professional presentation possible. And we thank you for your consideration. Recording in progress. Um, we will then proceed, Honorable Chairperson, on the presentation of the Presidential Employment Stimulus Package. We just want to indicate in noting your time constraint that this is a product of a serious uh, difficult times that the country faced of COVID-19. And therefore then the jobs were being away, the country was bleeding jobs. Uh, this sector was not was left, not left unscathed. And therefore then uh, the president uh, in his wisdom with his cabinet decided that we should be able to have some soft lending that can assist to still create jobs and not continue to allow South Africans to suffer. So this is the presidential employment stimulus package where then this sector benefited. And we would like to also indicate that it is in line now with the economic recovery and reconstruction plan that the department has, uh, the government has embarked upon. And we were fortunate again that we were reallocated another um, pay slice uh, to make sure that uh, this sector is able to come up on its feet, recover and grow. And we will then also chip us in, and this is linked to our cultural creative industries master plan, which has recently been approved by cabinet. And uh, therefore then this will help us then to have a better trajectory towards economic recovery. I will ask Chairperson that uh, the deputy director general responsible for pioneering this project in the department, Dr. Cynthia Kumano takes us through. Over to you, Dr. Kumano. Um, thank you very much, um, DG, and um, good morning, uh, Chairperson. I'm just trying to show my face. I hope it shows. Uh, and with your permission, I'll then switch it off um, so that I have got better quality. Uh, and uh, also, um, good morning to the members. Um, as indicated by the Director General uh, Chairperson, I would then uh, take the members through uh, 
uh, our um, uh, presidential employment stimulus program. Uh, we just wanted to give um, the committee first an indication of what had been implemented already before we talk to um, the program uh, as it is being implemented uh, this financial year uh, in terms of what we refer to as phase three of the PESP. I will be abbreviating it and, and referring it to PESP, uh, um, which um, is an acronym for Presidential Employment Stimulus Program. As indicated by DG, it um, sits within our economic recovery and reconstruction plan. Um, one of the key critical areas identified in the department's plan uh, is job creation. So this particular program, a uh, person has indicated in the slide that is reflected, um, which I will summarize, uh, is talking to phase one and phase two um, of, of, of PESP, which the department through the allocation that was given by National Treasury was able to, to implement. A total of nine projects um, over the financial year 2020, 2020 21 and 2021-22 were implemented. Um, at the time of, rep of reporting a uh, chairperson, we were also giving indication that uh, we, out of those uh, nine projects, uh, one of them, uh, which is being implemented through the National uh, Library of South Africa, uh, has been rolled over into this new financial year. And we were giving indication that um, it would then be finalized um, in September, which is the next month, 2022, and has involved an appointment uh, and a recall of interns who continue with the work and also as part of job creation. You will see, Chairperson, when I go to the next slide, the numbers that give indication uh, of the number of jobs that we created for each of these nine projects. What we want to emphasize in this slide is that uh, during uh, the implementation of this uh, program, there was an element of skills transfer that was incorporated in almost all the implemented uh, projects, particular um, a mention uh, is that of the one implemented by SARA and also the one implemented by SACO. Um, the details, as I said, will be in the next um, slide. Um, perhaps if I move there, because um, I'm just uh, going to summarize to also save on time, uh, Chairperson, if I move to this slide. We also needed to indicate to the committee that there were, however, uh, some recent challenges uh, that ensured uh, during the implementation process. For instance, we would have some of the participants dropping out of the program um, due to other opportunities that uh, they, they have managed to harness. And then you'll find that some of these participants did not complete the task, especially the training schedules. We also had to deal with a number of legal matters uh, due to the revised guiding figure uh, that is particularly with reference to uh, what transpired in the National Arts Council. And then also the beneficiaries requested for a longer time uh, particularly under the section uh, that was implemented by the National Film and Video Foundation on film production. Hence, the process of implementation having to overlap onto the next financial year, which, is, which was the 21-2022. A high number of non-compliant applicants in terms of the documentation that was required for us to be able to process their applications and the unavailability of film and IT digitization equipment in the country, which as a result then delayed the project that was implemented by our national archives, working with the National Library Services. As indicated, Chairperson, this slide then summarizes for the members, um, and I do apologize for the size of the font, if at all, um, it, it might not be visible very well on the screen. But I will just focus on the bottom of the slide where the total is reflected, Chairperson, which indicates the total amount of funding that the department received for both phase one and phase two of the Presidential Employment Stimulus Program. 
and it also gives the indication of the spend and the number of jobs that according to national treasury we needed to create which was 33,746 and we are giving indication to person that uh, the total number of jobs that um, we were able to create uh, through especially the employment multiplier model, which we use um, within this sector, stood at 38,557 beneficiaries. Uh, we also have given indication, Chairperson, that um, all the projects were completed, um, except for the one that I gave indication for where uh, there was a rollover, but uh, it didn't really necessarily uh, affect uh, the objective of the, of the project. Next slide, please. Now, moving on to what is currently happening, uh, Chairperson, as DG indicated, we have been allocated a, a new funding for this financial year, totaling 440 million. And then also for the next financial year, 460 million, which will enable um, the department to implement um, uh, in different initiatives for employment creation for the artists, the creatives, but also the cultural and heritage practitioners uh, within the industry. The output will focus on the number of opportunities to jobs created in the cultural and creative industry through targeted, uh, through targeted call. This will be a continuation of the work that was done by the NAC, NFVF, and other entities um, as well. Um, the cultural and creative uh, industry um, will also create more downstream jobs apart from the targeted jobs beyond uh, the indicator. As I said, uh, we are utilizing the employment multiplier model um, as it were. The support will also upscale the new normal of the online streaming of the cultural and the creative industry project, which were lessons learned from um, the COVID-19 pandemic that the country experienced. The agencies that are implementing um, this um, PEST this financial year is the National Arts Council, National Film and Video Foundation, the National Heritage Council, the National Museum, which is also referred to as the Art Bank in terms of the project that they are implementing, and the Business and Arts South Africa, which is BASA. From the lessons learned in the implementation of the previous uh, phases, which is phase one and phase two, um, this time around, the department has set up a project management unit that will play oversight, monitor, evaluate, compile reports, and show that a PESP uh, is being implemented in keeping with um, the allocation and the business plans and concept documents submitted by this. So we have got uh, that unit that we have set up within the department, which also helped contribute to job creation capacity in terms of the three personnel that are being, have, two have been appointed already, one is expected to, to commence in the next month. The sectors that are going to be covered through this new funding have been indicated on this slide as performance and celebration, which is inclusive of theater, dance, opera, and, and such, audiovisual and interactive media, visual art and craft, design and creative services, books and publishing, which is inclusive of the indigenous language development and promotion, cultural and national her natural heritage and human language technologies. Next slide. Then also uh, we, we, we just give indication to person um, of the framework that we are using in terms of uh, these um, genres or the disciplines that will be funded through this. We just give detail um, here in this slide um, of what I just mentioned in the previous slide in terms of um, the specific um, uh, genres and the specific disciplines per each of the six cultural domains. I won't read through this one. Um, next one, uh, please. The allocation and number of jobs that are to be created uh, total to um, 440 million for this financial year, as I indicated. And this slide indicates the split 
across the five uh, entities that are implementing. You will note, uh, uh, person that we have also projected the number of jobs that are to be created um, uh, by each of these interventions, and they are totaling to 24,403. I need to emphasize here, Chairperson, that um, in the guideline that we have given to the, uh, to, which we have given to the, uh, entities, to the five entities, we also um, indicated the, the, the priority target uh, groups that we are, we are targeting, which are youth, uh, women, and people with disabilities. And as they report uh, in our weekly meetings, monitoring meetings, they are giving us indication uh, of the application that they are, um, they are getting that are targeting these particular priority areas. I have indicated already about the PMU. The progress to date, uh, Tepesin, and, and, and I'm just going to indicate that at the time of compiling this document, um, we, that is where we were, but we are now quite advanced, uh, Tepesin, in terms of how we have progressed with implementation. Here, Chair, we were indicating that all five entities have submitted their concept documents, that the drawing up of MOAs have commenced, but I need to then indicate to the meeting that at this point, all MOAs, um, all four MOAs have been signed off by both the entities and our Director General representing us as the accounting officer in the department. There is only one uh, MOA that has not been finalized and which we are, we are due to com conclude before um, the end of this month, uh, if not the end of this week. We've already received it uh, from, the, from the entity and we are going to be routing it to. So all MOAs have been signed and they are in place and they are are accompanied by the concept document that define how they will implement. And again, we are just focus, uh, 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 indicating the focus, but I think I need to emphasize, uh, Chair, that this time around, the through the directive received from the Director General, uh, we also are focusing on the development and the support of SMM, sorry, of SMMEs and cooperatives that are in, in the industry. Hence, uh, the focus for BASA, one of the implementing entities, is on those particular areas uh, which cut across different domains. I've spoken to the issue of the PMU, Chepesin, at the time of our reporting, we were saying that the advert is out, but I would like to report that we now have the two deputy directors uh, who are forming that project management unit. They have commenced a um, duty as of the beginning of, of August. I would ask that they join us um, uh, before the meeting is over, just for introduction, they are the ones that are going to be directly working with the entities to ensure that um, any of the errors, any of the challenges that um, informed our, our understanding of what should happen uh, are addressed going into phase three, and we do not have the repeat uh, of the problems experienced uh, during phase one and phase two. Um, Chairperson, I would uh, at this point like to stop here uh, with our, our presentation in as far as the implementation and job creation through Presidential Employment Stimulus Program. Thank you very much, DG. Thank you. Thank you very much, DG. Uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson, John, may I check here? Uh, should we then uh, take uh, to the next item uh, falls under? Um, the same as the, the Director General. Should we then take the indigenous languages um, and then um, uh, be guided by you whether to be questions before we then move to the other three items? Uh, can I get a, a request for guidance in that regard on whether we present everything or would be a time when there would be then engagement? I've done calculation of time that in fact we've got about, if we were to finish at quarter to 12, We've got about um, 15 minutes um, presentation and maybe seven minutes for discussions and then for each, but it can be reduced even better if questions come after we've presented everything. But that is how I've tried to break down uh, for my colleagues to know timeline available to them that they've got just about 10 minutes each 
to present each item. Can I get guidance, Chairperson? Um, yeah, th th thanks a lot uh, for that. Uh, let's welcome the, the minister. Yes, uh, during the meeting now. Welcome, uh, Minister. Um, I think to save time, let's get all the presentations at once and then we'll engage. Uh, and then, like I said earlier, with the time constraint, the questions will be forwarded to the department for written uh, uh, replies for those. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Honorable Minister. Let's. Uh, take those uh, 10 minutes uh, presentation um, and then engage and, and, and we'll, we'll take it from there. You may continue with the presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. And uh, good morning, Minister. Can I then ask DDG, can we then move to the promotion of indigenous language, African languages, um, including Khoisan and Nama um, as the next presentation? Or uh, maybe would the minister like to say something before you continue, or he will comment after the presentation. Uh, um, it's up to the to the minister to decide whether he wants to do it now and or after the yes, presentation. Chair. Well, chair, uh, uh, I would come after the presentation and good morning to you and and members of the select committee. Thanks. Thanks, uh, minister. You're welcome. Yeah, you may continue DG, to make the presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, DJ. No, 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 go on, DG. But I'm not okay. seeing the presentation. Can it be shared, please? Lodwick. Um, while Lodwick does that, then DG, can I then also indicate that um, in terms of leading this presentation, the chief director will do that um, presentation. Uh, Lisa, please note that uh, 10 minutes, please. Over to you. Lisa, I'm not sure whether she lost we connection. Need to, we, need to share, we need to share the remaining minutes. It doesn't have to be 10 mm. minutes, but because then we'll definitely run out of time, out of time before we, we engage. So make sure that we, yeah, you, you keep time. Um, good morning, um, um, DDG. Um, Chairperson, Minister, um, DG, Honorable Members. Um, I did briefly flash my face. I'm not a, I don't know if you did see it, Chairperson. Um, <laughs> um, uh, my presentation is um, going to be on the promotion of indigenous um, African languages, including the Khoi, the San, um, and the Nama um, languages. Um, I just wish to say right at the beginning that we've really focused on the work of the department in promoting these languages. So we have focused on the promotion in general, but we will touch on the decade of indigenous languages in particular, because I note that the chairperson has wanted us to speak in that, in that direction. Um, I don't know if the presentation is uploaded yet, but um, with your permission, I can begin to speak. Um, oh, thank you. I can see the presentation now. Yeah. Um, so I think to, to begin with, the department recognizes the value and the status of official indigenous languages as an embodiment of a people's culture, indigenous knowledge systems, history, values, and beliefs. Um, based on this fundamental importance, we've realized that in indigenous African languages cannot be separated from their speakers as they're also a symbol of identity. I think furthermore, the importance of information access, the importance of deepening our democracy means that our languages need to be something that is part of our daily life and part of our work as, as government. 
Um, so after the new dispensation, um, South Africa had arrived at a crucial point in its linguistic history. We've had to respond to linguistic and cultural diversity, multilingualism, hence the promulgation of the Use of Official Languages Act in 2012, um, which has resulted in the, the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture also having a language policy. Um, while this act has brought a fresh approach to multilingualism, it's also encouraged the utilization of indigenous African languages, including the Khoi and the San and the Nama languages to foster and promote unity, social cohesion and Ubuntu. The department is also well aware of the danger of some indigenous African languages becoming extinct that are now only spoken by a handful of elderly people. Um, we further acknowledge that indigenous African languages cannot be relegated or seen as languages of informal businesses, but should be considered as a resource, especially within the mainstream economy. Um, we are also um, therefore even embarking upon research through the South African Cultural Observatory in, in trying to evaluate and measure the size and the contribution of the languages subsector um, to the creative industries. So the primary objective of the department in relation to languages is to develop and promote all South African official indigenous languages, including South African sign languages. Um, I've already pointed to some of the legislative um, instruments, but we have the constitution, the use of official languages act, the regulations in terms of that act, the departmental language policy, and then the South African Language Practitioners Council Act number eight of 2014, and the Pan-South African Language um, Board Act. So all of these instruments prioritize the need for the promotion of indigenous African languages. Um, the department, through the National Language Service, which is a chief directorate within the department, has also embarked on capacity building programs to promote the study of indigenous African languages. Um, the department is running a language bursary project working with different universities, where the purpose is to assist students who are interested in pursuing language studies and becoming the language practitioners of the future. Um, the department also has a new initiative in that it has begun to coordinate a national language stakeholder engagement forum, which brings together language stakeholders from national government departments, entities, provincial legislatures, and municipalities to share information and critical matters around the promotion and use of African languages. This same forum, um, we've taken it upon ourselves to also promote the UNESCO decade of indigenous languages from um, 2022 to 2032. And if I can indicate at this point that we will also therefore be, laun be launching a, ro a roadmap for the indigenous um, decade um, in November um, 2022. Um, this will be attended by the members of the forum, um, but also sort of national um, government um, and, and the various constituencies as a whole. Um, what we have also done in terms of the work of the forum is produce milestones around this roadmap for the indigenous um, languages. And as we move through the presentation, I will mention some of those milestones that we hope to achieve um, in the decade that lies ahead starting um, right now. Um, in addition to the forum, the department also works in partnership with the Pan-South African Language Board on the development and promotion of indigenous African languages, celebrates International Mother Language Day as one of the mechanisms to advocate the significance of using mother languages. Um, the department also has a translation and editing directorate, ensuring that citizens access to information and services 
um, are done in the languages of their choice. It also further facilitates communication between government and citizens through the translation and editing of official documents. And it also provides translation editing in foreign languages. The translation and editing service is also working with stakeholders at the moment to look at the feasibility of establishing national translation um, guidelines that can be followed by you know, everyone involved um, in this work around the country. In addition to that, the department develops specialized terminologies in all official languages. It's assisted by experts and collaborators throughout the country in developing terminology in all indigenous African languages to empower these languages to be functional in technical domains. Terminologies developed among others include the following domains, ICT, financial, parliamentary, political, um, elections, um, pharmaceutical. I can also add to that engineering and construction, indigenous plants and animals, etc., which the officials in this directorate are currently seized with. But in addition to that, in terms of the development of terminologies, um, the terminology directorate is also beginning a process of establishing national terminology policy. The importance in terms of this role of um, terminology is that eventually, partly through the policy, but also through the automated system of having a terminology management system, we are moving in the direction of not just having term lists, but a functional term register. Um, and this register will really become the basis of a term bank, and the term bank will become the basis of an archive, a living archive of Southern African languages. So the attainment of a term register and a term bank is one of the milestones that we're also putting on our roadmap for the decade of indigenous languages. Um, um, the, the same terminology directed is also doing work um, with basic education and its entities on the curriculum development being in all um, South African languages. The next um, area of work that we are championing is through human language technologies because through human language technologies, we can breach digital inequalities among South Africans, ensuring that information and government services can be accessed in all African indigenous languages. So the Human Language um, Technology Directorate supports multilingualism, enhances access to information, but it also has a number of quite groundbreaking systems and software, which it also trains language practitioners around the country um, in the use of these systems and applications. So the following are some of the language technologies that have been developed, um, spelling checkers, for 10 South African official languages, computer-aided translation tool called Outshumato Integrated Translation Environment. The tool can be installed on a computer, cell phones, it's freely available, used for the translation of texts into official languages and also other languages of the world. There's also machine translation systems for Sepedi, Isizulu, Afrikaans, Sesutu, Setswana, Setsonga, Shivenda and Isindebele. Um, the, the application can be downloaded free of charge and on the website that um, you can see in front of you, honorable members. But there are also current projects that we are seized with. Um, one is the development of digital dictionary resources for the new language. The project aims to preserve and promote this language by collecting and recording the speech data from Oma Katrina Esau. Um, upon completion, the project will produce hard copies and digital dictionaries for mobile access and the development of an app to learn the new language. Um, a milestone here will also enable us to 
launch um, the dictionary and the act in um, October of, of this year. Um, we are also seized with the development of an online South African sign language dictionary and digital sign language interpreter system. The department is also working on producing an electronic Isizulu cultural dictionary as a contribution towards the intellectualization of Isizulu. Most of these projects are done in partnership with universities or research institutions. I know that this one is done in partnership with the University of Zululand. Um, and then the Nama spelling and the orthography rules. It's also a project that's currently underway and this will be published in 2022 to, um, to, in the, to, to the 2023 um, um, financial year that's currently underway. Um, the department also develops and promotes um, South African indigenous languages, but also South African sign language, Khoisan and Nama language. Just in relation to the South African sign language, um, you know, the, I, I know that work is advanced and it's been championed by parliamentarians around the amending of the constitution to include South African sign language as the 12th official language um, of, of our country and that um, the bill has been um, released for public comments. So the department is also working very hard um, to ensure that it is ready for the officialization of South African Sign Language. There've been consultations that have already commenced with stakeholders, including the Pan-South African Language Board. And we're also looking um, at the human resources within the department so that we are able seamlessly to provide sign language interpretation, but also the development um, of, of, of the sign language and the possible um, approaches to standardization. Um, so I think in conclusion, we've spoken about the advancement of the languages through the activities of the department, also Pan-South African Language Board and other entities and other government departments. And I've managed to touch on the roadmap, um, which is key milestones as part of our work on the decade of indigenous languages. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson and colleague. Well, thanks very much, Lisa. Uh, can we then take the promotion of music and other art forms? in schools, uh, DDG, uh, still you, DDG uh, Kumal, Dr. Kumal. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, can I have the presentation uh, please on the screen, uh, uh, Ludwig? Our presentation, uh, while I wait uh, for it to go up on the screen, Chairperson, um, uh, talks to the programs. Uh, thank you very much uh, that um, we are implementing it in schools, but uh, particularly focusing on a program that we refer to as the artist in schools. But I also do give uh, the committee an overall um, a view of uh, the other programs um, uh, outside of the artists in schools. Is it possible to go on slideshow? So the emphasis in terms of background and context, uh, Chairperson, is, is that um, the backdrop um, against which we're implementing um, this particular program uh, that we are doing uh, in, in um, partnership with the Department of Basic Education is the revised white paper on arts, culture, and heritage. And it does reiterate the key um, uh, focus areas uh, around teacher development and assisting the improvement of the quality of content and delivery to the learners and um, also around the issue of learning and support material 
uh, curriculum development, implementation and enrichment um, in the creative arts subject, uh, in the space of creative arts um, in other words. Um, so the implementation of the program of uh, which we are abbreviating I AIS, uh, which stands for Artists in Schools, is an initiative of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. And it positions the community arts practitioners across all four genres, which we will mention later, as invaluable resources and catalysts uh, for the transformation of the creative arts teaching experience uh, in the public schools, which is our focus um, area. Also, um, the National Development Plan 2020, 2030 affirms uh, the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture and Department of Basic Education uh, that it should partner in the promotion and implementation of arts education and training um, in the public schools. So it's, it's within that particular backdrop chair. So as uh, indicated, this is a collaboration uh, between the, these two departments. And um, it is also supported by the curriculum assessment policy statement um, of the Department of Basic Education that provides direction and guidance, mainly in, in the following creative arts genres, which is music, dance, visual arts, and drama. We need to also emphasize that there is a process um, of uh, the signing of a reviewed MOU between the, the two departments that also incorporate this particular over, over and above others, obviously in the area of sport, there are other programs that the department is implementing. And um, also in our area of arts and culture outside of the artist in schools program, but that is part of the MOU that is in the process of being signed. Next slide, please. Chairperson, as indicated, um, we thought we would give uh, the committee um, also um, an, a best eye view of the programs uh, that we are implementing, targeting uh, youth uh, in the department. So you will know. You will note, uh, Chairperson, that um, in this particular slide, um, diagrammatically, we are showing on the left hand side uh, the programs that are being implemented in school, focusing all, all obviously uh, on the learners there in the schools. But we are also implementing as a department quite a number of programs targeting out of school youth. Uh, amongst others will be the debut fund program. And also we have another program that uh, focuses or targets uh, the youth uh, that are in rehabilitation centers, um, juvenile, which we are juveniles, which we are doing in collaboration with the Department of Correctional Services. We refer to that program as the Arts Access Program, but also an, another very important program that uh, targets out of school youth, which is the Young Patriots Program, being implemented uh, through um, NYDA who are the implementers of this program on the promotion of national symbols, civic participation, social cohesion, nation building, nation building national pride amongst other objectives. However, our presentation will then just focus on what we were requested to um, brief the committee on, which is what we're doing in schools. Next slide. The Artist in Schools program that we have, I, we have made reference to, I just want without reading each and every bullet to emphasize the last two slides, that this program does not only promote the creative arts, but it is importantly geared towards unearthing, developing, new and raw talent amongst the learners. We will show you later on, uh, Chairperson, that it doesn't end with the artist or that creative practitioner going to the school to uh, support the learners grow these skills, but we also uh, showcase those skills uh, later on, and we will be indicating that. 
So in addition to all the above mentioned factors that are in this slide, we also want to just emphasize that the Artists in Schools program creates sustainable job opportunities for the unemployed arts practitioners who are placed in the schools to assist creative arts subject teachers in the delivery of the curriculum to the learners in the classrooms. Next slide, please. We are further then also giving indication here um, of the level at which the support goes and it addresses the, the constraints and the challenges that the Department of Basic Education had identified. Amongst others is the issue of capacity constraints that are highly prevalent amongst the majority of the creative arts teachers who you will find that have also been assigned other subject areas um, in, in addition to the work that they actually um, you know, have quali are qualified in. The subject has become one of the most uh, difficult to teach uh, for the teachers as they do not have the theoretical and practical skills. And that is what we bring as, as, as a Department of Sport, Arts and Culture through this particular program to address and bridge that gap. I've already indicated that it is based on an existing framework of the Department of Basic Education, which is the curriculum policy statement referred to as CAPS. Next slide. I want to also then just ad 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 um, indicate here the, the process that we follow. Um, the program itself is implemented by very experienced agencies in the area of community development through arts, culture, and heritage interventions. So we've got in each and every province, as we will show later on in another slide, um, these experienced agencies that actually have are tasked with the responsibility of coordinating the program, working with the artist. The appointment of these agencies um, initially followed consultation processes and recommendation by the department in the provinces. As a result, all the agencies on the program have been identified and appointed from each province as I was indicated. This was very deliberate strategy by the department to ensure beneficiation in all the areas or throughout the value chain. There are regular consultations uh, that happen with the provincial department of, 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 uh, of education as they are the custodians of the education systems, which includes issues of policy, leadership, school teachers and learners, and also active participation and endorsement of the program uh, does vary from province to province as it is experienced even in other um, areas, other programs. Next slide. What we are emphasizing here and, and just sharing um, as information to the committee um, is that is the fact that the participation by the schools at this point is voluntary. The appointment and placement of arts practitioners follows a very rigorous process that includes, among others, placement of advertisement in the provincial news, social network platforms, interviews, auditions, and, and submission of portfolios. So that at the end of the day, who we placed in this, we place in these schools is a competent uh, creative practitioner. And we also ensure that the arts practitioners uh, that are placed in the schools are residents play, uh, uh, within that particular community uh, so that we do not have unnecessary confrontation uh, with the community where uh, we, 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 we take someone from another community to actually come and be placed in that school and we avoid that as, as, as much as possible. And also taking into account that those that are employed are, are within a legally allowed uh, working age. I've, I've made mention uh, also of, of the issues of, of all these agencies sign uh, documents, uh, official documents with the department that tie them to the responsibility objectives and deliverables um, uh, as, as it were and that the placement of practitioners is generally informed by the annual APP targets, which we would also break down in the next slide. 
the target for 21-22 was 300, and uh, this there's the same target for 2020-23. But you will see in the breakdown chair, please let's go to the next slide, that um, they, we do exceed this target every year. The implementation of the arts in schools uh, program um, is basically focusing on music, visual arts, drama, and dance. I think I've, I've indicated that. However, in this particular slide, we're just giving a breakdown of each of these uh, areas, what it entails. For instance, music, you will find that it covers African, indigenous, Western, classical, opera, jazz, hip hop. Obviously, we also take into account what is predominant in that particular community, but also the talents that um, actually are found uh, with, with the learners um, that, that are being um, are supported by the arts practitioners. Area of visual art is a breakdown covering drawing, painting, sculpturing, uh, craft, design, etc. Let me not um, read each and every, but there is a breakdown there that gives the indication of what each of these genres, what the subgenres under each one is. The next slide, please. Um, I was um, indicating earlier on to a person that it, do it doesn't end uh, with, the with, the, with the practitioner uh, or the creative going to the school, but it goes beyond that. What we have incorporated in the MOAs that we have signed with the agencies is that this should culminate into a provincial festival or provincial championship. The objective of this festival is to gauge progress and impact by showcasing the learners and practitioners and teachers' collaborative hard work. The championships or the, com uh, the competition component of the program does also encourage the participants to really work hard and impress so that they can be selected to represent their, represent their, their provinces at national level. That is what we are introducing this financial year at person, the national uh, championship. So the culmination now is not just going to be uh, limited to the provincial cha championships, but the, the young people would have an opportunity to showcase their skills even at national level. How we theme uh, our provincial championships is around uh, the national days, be it the heritage, the youth man, the human rights man, the reconciliation uh, day, et cetera. We also provide the learners with a, uh, with a semi-professional uh, space to express their talents. The parents and the communities are actually invited as audiences to support and affirm the learners during the performance. One such that I attended in the Eastern Cape, for instance, uh, in March, which was the last financial year, you could actually see the passion and um, the interest amongst the parents and the community members that came to attend these provincial championships, but also the pride on the side of the learners in displaying their talent. Let's go to the next slide. This is just an example uh, of one such provincial showcase uh, that took place in Nyanga um, in, the, in the last financial year, where the learners then get the opportunity. On the last, uh, on the left slide, you can see is the area of visual art, or art and on the right is the area of dance. This is the breakdown to a person per province uh, in terms of the last financial year, as I was indicating that uh, through collaboration and working with the implementing agencies, working with the Department uh, of Basic Education and also working with the individual schools, we continuously exceeding this target, which uh, in terms of our APP is 300, but we are indicating the split in this slide, but we are also giving indication of who are these implementing agencies per province that I was making reference to and the actual persons behind these implementing agencies. Next slide, please. There are challenges, obviously, that we are addressing uh, currently at Chairperson, uh, which is the high demand for the program uh, in the provinces. We are looking at our budget in terms of how we can be able to increase our budget going into the next years. As I said, this particular program addresses a, a multiplicity uh, of um, uh, objectives, and uh, hence the high demand um, is warranted. 
um, the, the, the issue of policy endorsement, which we are engaging DBE with, uh, the fact that we are barely reaching the majority of the 26,000 schools in the country, which exist, they, uh, hence uh, us looking at how we can be able to increase the number from our current uh, audit, obviously seeking partnerships uh, also outside um, our, our department as our resources budget, uh, budget wise are limited. Um, yes, let me, let me uh, maybe stop here, uh, Chairperson. What we are giving indication in this slide is that, yes, there are challenges that uh, we are continuously addressing. However, the program um, is running, it continues to run, to run and is achieving um, its goals in terms of what I highlighted around improvement of the curriculum understanding, but also creating jobs uh, for our practitioners. Thank you very much, Chair. I think the next, next slide is thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, DG. Well, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Kumalo. Can I then ask DG Mbima um, on the issue of the community libraries, uh, functionality, as well as the installation of South African flags in schools? And we will not come back to DG Mbima. You can follow your colleagues' uh, standard of sticking to time. Uh, over to you. Um, and then let's thank you, today. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, our Minister and all members, uh, all Honorable members of the Select Committee. Uh, I've just shown my face. Let me go straight to the presentation. Um, maybe just to indicate that uh, the purpose of the presentation is really just to provide the status on functionality of community libraries. We are responsible for coordinating the implementation of the conditional grant, whose responsibility is to ensure that there is access to knowledge and updated information. But also the grant purpose is to transform urban and rural community library infrastructure facilities and services through a recapitalized program. Now, maybe I will start with policy issues. We have got the Library and Information Services Transformation Charter, which was developed in 2014 and approved. And uh, also we are in the process of implementing some recommendations from the charter. And also we have got the South African Public Library and Information Services Bill, which was started in 2012. Uh, this was developed and costed. It provides a framework of measures to redress the inequalities in the provision of public library information services, but also it establishes essential norms and standards for the provision of library information services in South Africa. We also conducted the socioeconomic impact assessment of implementing the bill. And I must say, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that this uh, bill, uh, its implementation was delayed due to the high cost associated with the norms and standards framework. Just to give you an example, uh, to implement the bill, the department would have to ensure that 18 billion is available. So the due to financial constraints, the National Treasury cannot provide a funding. But also, according to Schedule 5 of the Constitution, uh, the provision of public library services is a provincial competency. And I must say that provinces are unable to fully uh, fund the operation operationalization of libraries. So this conditional grant um, has been earmarked to support schedule five function shift. And provinces may use up to 80% of their earmark allocations to address the schedule five function shift imperative. Now these are MTEF allocations in terms of the conditional grant. This is serious financial injection. As you can see the MTEF estimates I will not get into that uh, detail. And then you can see the equitable share allocations uh, to provinces, which is very minuscule. Had it not been for the conditional grant, it would have been very difficult for provinces to really um, address matters of library information services in the provinces. Um, this is a top total number of libraries in the country, as you can see that the total is 1,934. And then libraries that are behind the schedule, uh, that is um, like- I, don't, I can't see the, this thing on the screen, your presentation. 
Chair, I thought that it was the control was given by uh, the. Oh no, I thought what you were talking to, which is on a paper or something. No, it's okay. You can may continue. Um. It, okay. Can I proceed? Yes. Ma okay. Um, yeah. And then the, the library is that up behind the schedule. That is slide nine. Um, uh, we start with three state uh, libraries. Uh, there are three libraries there that are behind schedule, webinar library, fun students race library and South Pans library. Uh, you can see the years in which these were started. Uh, date of inception for webinars, 2013. Original uh, proposed date of completion was 2014, but now the revised uh, 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 date of completion is uh, 2022. Um, and I think it's because of poor, poor uh, contract management. Uh, and then the details are there in terms of where things are, uh, which means now that the new contractor is appointed and then the revised date is 2022. Van Staden Res Library, also contractor terminated due to poor performance. A new contractor started in October, 2021. And then the revised uh, time of completion is uh, September, 2022. If you look at South Span Library started in 2015, was supposed to be completed in 2016, but um, it achieved a practical completion in 2022. However, not operational due to outstanding snack, snack list items. So final complete, completion to be determined once outstanding works is completed. The electrical matter has been sorted. However, the stormwater drainage system is still to be finalized. So the need to fix the stormwater system was realized due to flooding um, early this year. Then you come to Gauteng, uh, Honorable Chairperson. There are two libraries, which is Acacia Library and Restefal uh, Library. Um, date of inception was uh, 26, 2017, and uh, it was supposed to be concluded in 2021. Close recently due to an outstanding ESCOM bill negotiation between ESCOM province and contractor and, and going. So the date of completion has not yet been determined, but of course the electricity matter has been resolved. And then the other one, Raste Fall, uh, its uh, date of inception was 2018. Uh, August 2021 occup occupancy certificate attained on 8 December 2020. But also here we have a problem of the electricity supply cable, which was stolen after the occupation certificate was, was attained. And this matter is uh, uh, will be resolved by March 2023. So the phase two of the project entails the paving and the installation of the guardhouse. And then also in Houghton, you still have got in Pumelelo Library, which was uh, its date of inception, 2018, supposed to be concluded in 2019. Um, also here, the, the, uh, the revised date of completion is um, 2023, March. Uh, here also phase two of the project still to be completed. The phase two of the project is the installation of the carport and paving. The library that still does not have ICT connections. And uh, the province has already purchased books and um, the furniture for the library. Drizek Library also is the same. Uh, the vandalization happened when the occupancy certificate had been issued on the 23rd of April, 2029. Now the province is in discussions with provincial treasurer to shift funds for remedial works, which is also as a result of vandal vandalism that happened there. Limpopo Tumela Library, um, it was started in 2019, supposed to be concluded in 2021, but due to COVID-19 community disruptions and court cases as a result of tribal leadership contestation, this particular library has got a serious problems because uh, the chiefs um, are contesting where it is supposed to be located. Now the revised date of completion has not yet been determined given the intricacy of, of the matter. Um, because of contestation. KZN, we have got Dugudugu Library, uh, started in September 2019, supposed to have been concluded 2020. Um, now the new date is uh, August 2022. Community unrest in the area also militated against the conclusion of this library. 
Northwest uh, is Saudi Library, started in April 2017, supposed to have been concluded 2018. Cash flow problems by the contractor, and then the third party contractor to be appointed. So those are the contract uh, contractual matters, uh, uh, honorable chairperson, which have not yet been determined, but the revised date is uh, September 2022. Now, the, if you look at uh, paragraph 14 or, or slide 14, it then talks about vandalized libraries uh, over three years. I'm not going to get into the details there. You can see in the Eastern Cape, it's 20 break-ins and uh, theft. And then there are uh, actions that need to be taken. And I think they are written there. If you look at Free State, there are five. Also, it's break-ins and theft. Gauteng, it's about 20. It's break-ins and theft as well. KwaZulu Natal, six is the same thing. Uh, Limpopo is the same thing. It's about four. And Pumalanga, it's about 14. There you have bad butlery, theft, uh, vandalism. Northern Cape is the same. Theft, about 24, theft, vandalism, as well as bannings of those li of the libraries. And Northwest, about six, theft and break-ins. And Western Cape, it's about five, theft and break-ins. And the actions taken are also outlined there, uh, Chairperson. Now going to slide number 17, we're then talking about, we talk about the highlights of the grand achievements, where we've been able to purchase library material, where we've been able to install information and communication technology infrastructure. We have just been able to build about 238 new libraries, 652 libraries are graded and maintained and 948 libraries provide free public uh, internet access. And of course, we employ about 2,500 uh, number of uh, staff. And we have been able to inculcate the culture of reading and writing. Then there are overall challenges, uh, chairperson, which is infrastructure backlogs, <clears throat> inadequate book collection, poor quality on infrastructure projects, increased dependence on grants to fund staff and new projects, given the fact that uh, I've actually outlined the equitable share of provinces, lack of norms and standards in the library information uh, as services, as well as vandalism of libraries. And then the proposed solutions is actually strengthening of provincial capacity uh, on grant management and project management, high level engagement and implementation of service, service delivery agreements, permanent appointment of staff, community engagements and awareness campaigns. That brings me to an end of the first presentation, Honorable, Honorable Chairperson and Minister. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for the, for the presentation. Is that, um, are they, no, Chairperson, we've got uh, we've got the last presentation. The last presentation will be on the uh, yeah. Yes, yes I'm, I'm hopeful that, that uh, yeah. uh, someone is showing schools. that. Flags in schools, yes, uh, did it, you can go ahead. Uh, Lord, uh, has it been shown? Applaud. Because I'm I'm running my presentation from. Uh, has it been shown the other side, did you, or should I share it myself from this side? Yeah, I think it's, it's going to upload it now. It's loading. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just go uh, straight to uh, slide number three, which uh, then talks to the purpose of provision of flag to schools. This particular project is aimed at equipping all schools in the education management information systems that are based with South African national flags. And the main purpose of this is to promote national identity and national building in the country. Mandate and background of provision of flags to school. We are saying here that uh, our department uh, has got the mandate to popularize national symbols to schools and in the country at large. And to this effect, the department initiated this pro 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 project in 2007. Since then, more than 25,241 flags and flag poles were installed in schools in an attempt to ensure that all schools in the country can fly the flag. And then 
slide number five then talks about the replenishing of flags to schools. Now we're saying here, honorable chairperson, that due to exposure to national elements such as rain, wind, and sun, the flag cloth deteriorates. It actually does not last more than 24 months. And thus there is a need to replenish these flags over time, more particularly the cloth. So the lifespan of the flag is even shorter in windy areas. The department currently has an annual target to supply 100 uh, schools uh, with new flags each performance year of the MTSF. And also using the database compiled from the Young Patriot Schools audit reports, we were able to deduce that the main need of the schools is replenishment of the flags that are worn out. Few schools, especially in urban and peri-urban areas have lost their flag poles due to crime, especially in areas where metal and aluminum recycling is rife. The implementation approach. We are working with our provincial stakeholders to gather more information on the schools that need new flag poles. And we will be servicing the schools based on the size of the scope within a given performance year. We cluster a limited number of schools within a certain geographic spread in the province to, co to contain cost of replenishing the flags or the flag poles. But just to say, uh, whilst I'm still on that uh, item number seven, we are actually working with the Department of Basic Education. In fact, we, we will be entering into a, 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 an MOU with them because I think we can work even much more smarter by ensuring that uh, the issue of flag becomes systemic within the education system. And we then maybe provide these flags in districts and then they are able to collect these flags and then they install them themselves. That's where we will be going, going forward. So we are, the department is working with provincial counter, counterparts uh, and, and uh, have been replenishing flags in various schools across the country. In the first quarter of 2022, 2023 performance year, we were able to deliver 33 flags against the target of 30. The bulk of the schools that were serviced were in the Alfred Nzo district, Eastern Cape, and were serviced by the Young Patriots program in that district. The annual uh, anticipated annual performance in 2022-2023, the department is currently working with various provinces to reach more schools in the outer quarters of the performance year. And of course, uh, due to partnership with the Young Patriots program in various provinces, we will reach more schools than initially planned for the current performance here. So that brings me to an end uh, of this presentation, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Minister. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, um, thanks, thanks a lot for the for the for the for the for the presentation, um, Honorable Members. That's the presentation for us to engage. We I don't know what's the time now for some. I'm using my phone and that is where the watch is. Um, yeah, members, you may engage with the presentation. Or does the minister want to say something before we engage or will you talk at the end, uh, honorable minister? Yes, minister. Uh, yes, at the end, at the end, sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I remember there's the presentation um, for us to engage. I think it's about 10 past 11 minutes past, past 11. So, yeah. Um, I just want to, I don't know if my memory is um, it's not saving me well. Um, I don't remember this program of Young Patriot. Um, I've heard about it, but I don't remember the details now. Um, who are these? Are they business people or are they students or is that prominent people in the in the community? And um, what value? I know that they are adding value in terms of uh, assisting with the 
with the with the with the flex. And my worry again is that our, the flex, as you say, in areas where it's windy and rainy, they don't last long. Isn't there some materials that could be used that will last longer than 12 months? Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the question of theft of the pools, that is very worrying. I mean, if people steal the pools, the pool that holds the flag, it really says something about us and our values as a as citizens. How do you steal it? How do you steal a flag? I mean, how do you steal a a, a pole a pole that holds that hold that 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 holds the flag? It's 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 really yeah. It means we really have a long way to go. And uh, how are we involving communities actually? Because these are part of the programs related to safety at schools. How are you linking with the Department of Education in ensuring that uh, we secure whatever we have? Um, honorable members, it's over to you to engage. And the other is on languages. Um, I know that in some in the Northern Cape, there are people who speak Nama. Um, as I've experienced with one, one some, some time ago when we went on oversight the, in the Northern Cape, um, we met this farmer who, who spoke Nama because he's originally from Namibia. She was born in Namibia. And then her parents are South African. She is a South African. She speaks Nama. And and she was also saying that the language we we use it, we are losing it. There are very few people who speak it in this side of the world, and it's even worse with with the Hoi and Sun languages. And issues again related to security of libraries. Yeah. When we were there in the, uh, I think we went to the Western Cape some three years ago where we visited a library, um, which was inaccessible for people with disabilities. I don't know if we still have the report of that uh, visit. It was the Committee on Education we visited the library. Um, yeah, how do we ensure that the libraries also are, are, are accessible for people who are physically challenged, people who are using, um, you know, wheelchairs and and other working aids. Um, how do we make them accessible to everybody? Um, thank you very much. Honorable members, I'll take hands as they are shown on the on the screen. On the raise hand uh, facility. I see Honorable Christian. Thank you very much. Honorable Christian, uh, over to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I've just got two questions, Chairperson. The one is concerning the state of the libraries in the Northern Cape, um, specifically the few that I visited. Um, the one in Barclay West, which is a fairly new um, library, but they've been battling to keep that library open because it seems as if the infrastructure um, from time to time there's problems with the infrastructure and also the accessibility um, for the community in Barclay West. It seems that it's not very accessible. They've complained that from time to time the library is closed and then it's open due to repairs again and, and so on. So I would just like the department maybe to follow up on that library and see if um, some solution can't be brought there. And then I just want to know from the department, the community of Platfontein near Kimberley, the Koi and San community, what specific program have they rolled out in that community with regards to language preservation? That's all from me. Thank you very much, Chairperson. 
Thank you, Honorable Christian. Um, may we have the department to respond? I'm so members are apprehensive because we have this uh, sitting and we driving from far. The buses are collecting us at 12. So, yeah. Um, and if, and some of the questions, I think we'll send them to the department in writing. Uh, uh, over to you, um, PG. You know, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Allow me to allow uh, TVJ Kumaro and the Young Patriots, uh, who are they? What is the role they play? Just brief outline. TVJ Kumaro, and then Mr. Ndima on the issue of the flags, uh, the easy tier and where. Um, uh, after 12 months. Um, and then, of course, uh, the issue of the NAMA. I think we've got the issue around the rallying point of being Omar Katrina programs and projects that we're involved in. But let me just allow you, because more of the questions are related to your latter presentations. Let's start with you, Tedi Chikuma. Uh, thank you very much, um, Titi, and thank you very much, Chepesin. Uh, um, for the questions and also the other con honorable member, Christian. Um, on, on the Young Patriots, uh, Che, I did touch on the fact that this falls under our out of school youth programs. So it's, it's basically okay. young, it's young people um, from the communities um, within those particular provinces. And, and basically what we are doing is giving them an opportunity that has launched uh, quite a number of them um, in, and created job opportunities for them because they spend a year with us. It's a 300 of, uh, mm -hmm. there's 300 of them in total across different provinces. And the program is run, um, it, it, it's referred to as a national youth service program and it's implemented by NYDA. And its key focus areas, um, while it does give these young people an opportunity uh, to improve their CVs, their profiles, uh, in terms of the opportunity they've had um, with us for that particular year, but also specifically the role that they play is around the issues of social cohesion and nation building, which would include, amongst other things, what uh, Didi Chindima was talking about, the role that they play in as far as, um, you, you know, um, imparting uh, knowledge and educating around our national symbols, including the flags. What we have incorporated into this program is what we refer to as adopt a school um, a project that the young patriots would do. So if those young patriots uh, are, are from Eastern Cape, in the Eastern Cape area, they will then have a school that they're working very closely with, where they will then be able to provide this kind of support, growing patriotism and um, through mm. these different uh, initiatives. But in the process, they also are gaining skills, as, I'm, as I've said to person, that really assist them uh, to secure uh, job opportunities um, once they, they leave um, the, the, the program. So that's, that's mainly, I hope I, I have actually clarified. It's a youth uh, support program and job creating problem and initiative of the department. There were questions, uh, DG, I don't know whether you want uh, DG Jindima to first come in that I would request my colleagues from no, National no, Language no, no, Service. Proceed, yeah, proceed and okay. conclude. If uh, Lisa um, Ozanelli, you, you, you can come in in terms of the specifics because the questions from the chairperson and also from the honorable member were, were requiring the specific interventions program that we are doing in the area of Koensan and Nama and, and the others. Um, thank you, um, 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 DDG um, chairperson. Um, um, I think the, 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 there were two main questions addressed at, at us. The first was about the Nama um, language and that we are losing um, Nama and that languages are um, also on the verge of becoming extinct. 
Um, in the presentation, um, we mentioned that, that, that our focus um, has been on the new language and, and the new language is part of the Nama family group. Um, so we are focused specifically on the new, um, but we are also going to move forward um, on, on other um, languages of that group as well. And I think that the work of the Pan-South African Language Board, there's also work done um, by the, the board in the, in the same um, sort of domain of, of, of languages. Um, as regards the question about the general language preservation of um, the Khoi and the Nama languages, um, part of our focus, I think, as I've also indicated in the presentation, has been around the development of um, the orthography of, of, of these languages. Um, so, that, so that's ongoing work also through the use of human language technologies um, but we're also working closely with universities um, in, those, in those areas um, to help de develop those, the, the, the languages. So for instance, one of the human language technology projects is, is based as a partnership um, with the University of, of Cape Town. Um, so I think that's all I can say at this stage, but if one of my national language um, colleagues um, would like to make any additions, um, Chairperson, um, then we can also do so. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Ndima, you want to comment? Uh, thank you, DDG. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, other projects that we have, the, the preservation projects, there is a dictionary that is being You are muted, I guess. Or is this a problem with your life? I think, Chairperson, we can conclude uh, by uh, checking Mr. Ndima because uh, clearly there is a problem on the line and there is no time on our side to spare. Uh, Mr. Ndima, only questions, Fleck and the librarians. Thank you, thank you, DJ. Now we follow each other. There's Mr. Ndima and Mr. Ndima. Um, it, well, I hope it's not read as some kind of nepotism. Um, maybe just uh, dealing with the matter of um, flags, uh, uh, Chair Pesci. The, the material that we are using, it's, it's a very good material. It's also uh, being, um, you know, it's approved by the South African Bureau of Standards. But maybe Chairperson, we need not also just go to a point of uh, looking at the material that might even be heavy on the pole. Um, and I was just checking with my colleagues, for instance, um, how much does it cost, uh, uh, you know, the cloth. The cloth is about 250 to, to 300 rands. Now, if you have got that cloth for say, for instance, 24 months, even if it means uh, after 12 months. Um, I just think that it's something that could be manageable. Uh, each and every school can actually manage that. And that's why I was even saying that um, we are working with the Department of Basic Education to ensure that uh, it's not us who always go to these schools and, and, and put the flags. They are there on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, what most schools that are able to keep uh, these clothes for a very long time are those schools that actually um, uh, uh, take their flags um, out uh, maybe uh, in, the, in the evenings and then they unfair the flag in the morning and, and they do that exercise because that's what, me, what they need to do. So I, I'm just thinking that uh, the, the, the the cloth as it stands, it is a, a, a good cloth that can really continue to be used, but I think the maintenance needs to come from schools. 
that's that's all that I can say. But with regards to the theft, uh, Jefferson, you are correct. Uh, there is theft uh, with everything that is uh, metal. Um, uh, you find theft in, rail, in railway lines and all those kinds of things. And it, it, it requires an integrated approach to, 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 to the protection of schools, the security around the, the, the schools, but also awareness within communities in terms of the importance and the significance and the symbolism that the flag carries as a national symbol. I would like to stop there, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, I think, uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ndima. On the question of uh, Flag Fontaine community, I think uh, in Bangalore West, we will have to just check directly on, the, on those communities. Um, but it, the approach we are making relates to overall development of and preservation of the, the language for the uh, Nama and Koi so that um, it uh, covers everyone who is a speaker of that language. Um, and therefore then maybe on how they get access to the information uh, that uh, on work we have done uh, is what we might have to look at or on that accessibility by the Committee of La Fontaine uh, Honorable Chair. Um, of course, we will follow up then on the Parkley West issue. Uh, Chairperson, I just wanted to conclude from my side by indicating that uh, the issues raised in this uh, presentation is all revolving around transformation uh, programs that we have because without language, as a uh, former president Matiba once said, that uh, without language, one cannot talk to people and understand them. One cannot share their hopes and aspirations or grasp their history, appreciate their poetry or suffer their songs. Closing that quote on Matiba is that the language is a gateway to development. And that is why various programs we have made aim at developing these languages, standardization, particularly on the scientific concepts at a person, because we believe that uh, if they are developed to that level and then they are utilized, um, whether it is in science or in math or in astrology, we should be able to then create demand for this language. And it is important that we therefore then ensure that the people of South Africa who are African language speakers are having their languages developed at the highest level. And that is why uh, the initiatives that we have indicated here are all integrated towards one thing, entrenching transformation and developing these languages to make them accessible, but also scientifically utilized. There was one point that we did not indicate the detail, Chairperson, around the issues of uh, bursaries that we have per year, it's 250, on languages, bursaries that we provide for the language uh, practitioners. And the budget is 6 million rand per year. And the universities are six that we utilize. And that's Venda, Forte, as well as Free State, Northwest, Western Cape and Vets. And these are mainly cost grade to ensure that uh, these languages also we've got practitioners and skills that are required for their development. There was a question about the blind. We work with the library for the blind to make sure that people who are partially sighted are also able to access information. And the, what we have done now is to introduce uh, that uh, every library modular or modern brick that is made, it always have to have this component of the support to the partially visually impaired people and so that they are able to access information. On the construction of libraries for people with disability, it is important that uh, where there is a need to do modification so that there is a place for the REM to come in is done. But we hope that all the time when the specifications are made, that there is a standard practice that this must incorporate access by people with disabilities. Thank you very much, Chairperson.
Um, yeah, thanks, DJ. Um, member, is there anyone who wants to raise the last question? Oh. Let's 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 give this opportunity to the to the to the minister to yeah. As well. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thanks uh, to uh, members of the Select Committee. Chair, the first thing I want to say is that all this which is reported is just uh, part of the work we do uh, as, the, as the portfolio. Uh, but each and every aspect of what we do uh, is informed by science. Uh, we uh, have the research arm of the department. The South African Cultural Observatory is the research arm uh, of the department. So whatever we do is evidence-based. Uh, we don't thumbs up. As we speak today, that our work or the work of our research arm, uh, the South African Cultural Observatory, is so prominent that the UN agencies, UNCTAD, UNESCO, quote us because they understand that South Africa's uh, approach uh, is the way to go. In fact, they, they, they encourage other countries to follow South Africa's model. Now, I'm saying that uh, so that uh, we come to understand that our mandate of transformation, therefore, is based on science, uh, and everything else is informed by that. Uh, I would love to, at some point, that uh, we, uh, together, the select committee, dig deep, deep uh, on the question of decoloniality. Uh, uh, the, the, the Limpopo, for instance, uh, in the, during the early days of our democracy, was leading in this process uh, of transforming the heritage landscape in the country. We cannot change, uh, and uh, this will, will this point will make until it sink even uh, to the doomsayers. We cannot continue to have the, the historically oppressed majority being the cultural minority in the public uh, spaces. We can't. We cannot do that. And uh, we are not going to be apologetic about it. We'll continue to ensure that we normalize the situation. Right now, we have a lot to do uh, in terms of ensuring that the values, uh, which are the founding principles of our constitutional order, of our constitutional democracy, are actually the ones which are centered in everything we do. But all in all, uh, I think that uh, we uh, are happy that uh, we had the opportunity to engage with the select committee. We hope we'll still uh, further engage because there are a number of things which uh, we still need to do and we still need to share uh, with uh, our, our uh, select committee. For instance, uh, the issue of uh, cultural diplomacy is quite important that our cultural goods and services have to be exported. And members of the select committee must know that the, what is the, or where are the main destinations for our cultural goods and services? It's not in Africa. Uh, it's mainly US, Mexico, and Canada. Those are the importers of our cultural goods and services. And, and those cultural services are actually what South Africa is defined with. You and I would know that when you go anywhere in the, in the world, people would ask you, uh, do you know Nelson Mandela? Uh, you know, because he has been this uh, international expert uh, for South Africa. But today, you are asked questions like, uh, do you know Black Coffee? Uh, that talks to the creative side of South Africa. So we have a long way to go, and we uh, still need even more time to share with uh, you uh, in the select committee uh, part of the work we are doing. As I say, 
what has been presented here is the fact of what we are doing in Chapter 6. But thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, thanks, Minister. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, uh, honorable Chairperson, members. I'm sorry yes, to uh, intervene. Um, I'm really sorry to intervene, Chairperson. I just have, um, and based on what the Minister asked now, so if I'm allowed, please, Chairperson. No, you are you, allowed. You are welcome. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. So, Minister, um, we, we spoke a lot about indigenous languages now. And um, we spoke about the Nama and the Khoi and San languages, which um, to my mind are extremely important. I'm very, very um, closely involved, especially with the um, Khoi and San communities of Platfontein in the Northern Cape who are really extremely marginalized. And I really see that their language is, um, it, it's just, you know, phasing out. I think there's one elderly lady that still speaks Khoi and San there and um, a number of the youngsters, you know, as they move out and they move to universities, et cetera, they are no longer interested or, or maybe there's just no time and, and opportunity for them to get to know um, the, the Khoi and San languages. And I'm afraid that eventually we might lose it completely. Now, Minister, um, the same might eventually happen to Afrikaans. And I'm afraid that we might be back at the same situation in the same conversation in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years time, where we come back and we want to preserve Afrikaans because it has literally died out. So my question to you, Minister, is, um, is Afrikaans included in these indigenous languages so that in future we don't have to come back to this platform and try to preserve another indigenous language that might die out because we are marginalizing or forgetting about it? Um, and that is really my question, Minister, because the department's aim is to, you know, preserve these languages that are dying out. And you can actually see it across the world that that is happening. And so specifically Afrikaans, um, is it included in these indigenous languages and in the policy specifically? Thank you very much, Chairperson and Minister. Yeah, need for preservation, I mean, and develop, it's not only preservation, it's also development of languages. Um, like we talk about, you know, books being written in those languages, uh, dictionaries, like they said, interpretations and all that. Um, I remember there was, a, there was a language that nearly went instinct, that's Gaelic, that's spoken in... in it's in Scotland, yeah. Um, and some university, St. Francis, decided in, in order for, for it to revive this language, they ended up having a, a faculty that deals with Gaelic as a language. That's how they are trying to revive that language. It's an indigenous language of, of Scotland, I think, Europe or whatever, you know. But I think... <clears throat> uh, is Africans really under threat of, uh, you know, being forgotten as a language? I don't see that happening very soon because there are a lot of South Africans who speak uh, uh, um, um, Africans. I speak it too. Um, but Minister, and you may respond to this question. Uh, honorable, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think the Honorable Member touched on a very important part, uh, part of our work, which is culture, basically. Because uh, through language, you communicate uh, people's cultures. Um, and therefore, this aspect of culture, which is very key, has to be protected and preserved at all material time. Talking about the Khoi and the San and the Nama language, uh, if uh, Honorable Member um, uh, listened well, where the uh, Lisa, for instance, uh, the chief director, they was talking about very many initiatives, including uh, dictionaries, uh, which are being uh, uh, digitally 
uh, prepared uh, in the now when we talk about uh, certain languages, like the new language, for instance. Uh, Ma uh, Katrina Esau uh, is said to be the last living person speaking the language. And the process of preservation of the new language uh, has uh, been accelerated uh, from the side of the department. Uh, but it's not only about language, it's about a people, Khoi and San people, uh, their place uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the South African context. Uh, for instance, if you look at uh, how government, uh, the coat of arms, for instance, the coat of arms is inspired by the foremost indigenous people in this country, which is Khoi and San. Uh, if you look at it, you are going to see that. Um, cabinet last year uh, concluded on the Khoi and San uh, heritage route, which uh, I think uh, uh, the Mount correctly traced about 13, I don't know, 13 or 19 nodal points across South Africa uh, of Khoi and San. It means there is no corner in South Africa where Khoi and San people never lived, uh, contrary to the popular belief and view that they were only confined to, in, in Cape or the then Cape or uh, Western Cape and Eastern Cape. When talking to this question of decoloniality, uh, Chair, uh, when we named the airport in Kebeha, uh, Chief David Stirman, uh, people didn't understand what we were doing. Uh, and Chief David Stirman is the only uh, coy leader who escaped Robben Island three times. Uh, and uh, we, we, we are deliberate about it. We are deliberate about it because we think that we still need to do more for the Khoi and San people uh, to recognize them, recognize their languages, recognize their Many of their languages, it's true, they are near extinct. Uh, so, um, uh, hello, Chair. Now, I think thanks to the, they just put the. Oh, yes. Like no, so they are near, yeah. they are near extinct. Uh, but you see, in the in the in the current conjunction, where you have uh, eleven official languages, and I can tell you that we are going to have the twelfth one with the sign language. Uh, the process is on on that. Two of the official languages are advanced, and that is Africans and English. They are advanced here because of what you said earlier on because of a lot of research which went on over years, a lot of development, uh, a lot of monuments which were built then to ensure that these languages are developed. No, they are developed. I, I don't see the two languages uh, being extinct. Uh, uh, but I can say that uh, uh, we support all the languages and we want them to, but we want these two to lead and in sharing their expertise and their level of development uh, uh, in assisting other languages, which are official languages. For instance, earlier on, Chair, we had what was called one of the, the national <laughs> the, the National English uh, Literary uh, Museum, which is uh, located in Makan, in the Eastern Cape, and we made the uh, a, 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 an intervention there, that it is, it is odd to have a national English uh, museum which uh, concerns itself about English in an area where 80% of people speak Isikosa and they don't benefit out of that. And then we said, no, let's have, in terms of development, yes, English should uh, continue. Uh, to be developed, but also add is the cost. Two, it's no longer now National English uh, Museum, 
it's now uh, Amazwi National uh, Museum of Literature, precisely because we have to be sensitive uh, to the fact that there are languages which still a lot which still need a lot of development, and together with those which are developed, we are going to be able to to move forward. So all the languages, eleven of them, the twelfth of of the languages, when it comes on board, is going to be uh, protected, is going to be preserved, uh, and ensure that they uh, they develop. That includes Africans, but I don't see Africans any time. Uh, you know, being extinct. Uh, it's supported uh, like all other languages, uh, but we also note that it's a bit developed uh, in terms of uh, uh, its capacity uh, compared to uh, the other nine uh, uh, official languages. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, um, thanks, 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 thanks a lot, uh, Minister. And I think we are at the end of our meeting because the buses are about to leave. And thank you very much, uh, Minister, for attending to this meeting and DG, uh, all management. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. For members who will deal with the. Thank you, Chairperson. With the yes, administration. Sir. We'll deal with administrative issues in the next meeting, not today because there's no time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, General Chair. We are late. Recording stopped.